much, Daisy, for uh, taking the time. It's a huge, huge honor. Thank yeah. you very much um, <laughs> for taking the time and for all you do, especially. And I think you've shown um, tremendous leadership, particularly around the coronavirus issue. And I personally think, you know, we and always are so lucky to have you. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and so what we're doing is, we're a new community church in St. Albans. Um, we are due, we were due to start actually on Easter Sunday at the Maltin Theatre. Our whole ethos is to be part of the community and to support the community and to thrive together as a community and, you know, bring in the good news of the, of the gospel, but still respecting people's, you know, views and wishes and just be a real part of the fabric of the St. Albans community. Sure. Unfortunately, the coronavirus a pandemic has meant that we can't meet in person now so we are meeting very much online as an online church yeah and the feedback and the response to that has been amazing Great. but what we are doing in addition to supporting the live services that we have on sunday is we are sitting down with people who have a voice in this time um, and having conversations very very real and authentic conversations so that we can take this conversation that we, we are having today and you know, by the medium of social media, especially for the people of St. Albans, share that so that people can have, one, some thought leadership and two, some reassurance and some hope mm -hmm. amidst all of the sort of the gloom and doom that we hear every day and we're all subject to. But I just wanted to use this medium to promote um, the work that you're doing, but also for you to get your message out there to people to say, you know, in all of this, how can people really hold on? So I'm just going to be running through a series of questions. Yeah. Okay. And um, so the first one is, obviously, as I said, you know, huge con congrats on your, you know, your election, so sexual election. And it's four months in now, even though it feels like a long, a lifetime. So how's it going? How's the first four months been from your perspective? Sure. So, well, the election was on the 12th of December. Yeah. Um, and I said on the night, I had two priorities. Uh, one was to do uh, a big drive uh, for a big collection for St Albans and District Food Bank yes. and the other was I was going to meet 100 organisations in my first 100 days. Um, I got as far as 82 before oh, coronavirus wow. happened so I think that's probably not too bad in the circumstances but I spent the first 100 days meeting loads of community groups and churches and other groups, um, you know, uh, charities and campaigns and things. I set, had to set my office up. I had to recruit staff. Um, I had to learn how parliament worked. I had to get used to working with new colleagues. And then all of a sudden, a few weeks ago, coronavirus came along and suddenly everything changed. Um, obviously parliament hasn't been able to sit. So I've been working from home like everybody else. Um, I've had to do my parliamentary work by dialing in, you know, making Zoom calls and phone calls to, to either to my lived-in colleagues or to, yeah. to, to ministers or whatever it might be. So it's been a bit of a whirlwind. Yeah. So it's, it, and I can see that because obviously, you know, from from the outside I'm looking in and the recipients of some of your activity, mm -hmm. I can see how intense it's been. I can see how you know very demanding it it has been. So with the coronavirus and you did really great i mean 82 hitting 82 organizations within the community in such a short period of time that's amazing that's like you know almost like one a day if not more than yeah. your track record so getting out there in the community pre-coronavirus yeah. what were some of the messages that were coming through from when we look at the st Thomas community meeting the organizations meeting churches what would you say people's greatest needs were then pre-coronavirus as we know coronavirus has come, it's disrupted everything, and what life looks like post-coronavirus, and even with it, going through it now, is very, very different. But what were some of those messages and the things that you were getting at that time, when you were, when life was normal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think the main thing was that, I mean, it was extraordinary, and it still is extraordinary to see how much is happening in our community, but I think a lot of people don't see it, you know, it's sort of, sort of, quite a lot of it is under the radar, and yeah. so what I hope I've been able to do by going up, going to places, taking photographs, writing about who I've met in the newspaper, doing my regular newsletters, is I've managed to link up lots of different organisations. So, for example, um, uh, I, I was holding regular surgeries wh uh, where I sort of hold one-to-one -one meetings with people who have, have particular problems, whether that's housing or social security. And sometimes people would come and say, you know, I don't have anywhere to go during the day um, because of you know, where I'm living. And, and then I was able to say, well, actually, 
this place is open, this church runs a cafe, or um, somebody else came along and said, uh, well, my husband has dementia and we're looking to find a, a dementia group to join, a uh, dementia uh, support group, and, and because I've met one, I was able to put them in touch. Yes. Um, and then there are other sort of groups who um, are uh, looking to move premises, and then I've met somebody else who's also trying to move premises, and you, you, know, you can sort of put them in contact. And yeah. um, so a lot of it is um, sort of mixing and matching and being a sort of, a, a sort of focal point where you can put different people in touch with each other. Um, I think we have got an amazing community spirit here in St Albans and there's lots of groups doing a lot of really good work but often they're not quite plugged into each other's networks um, and so I think by and large one of the greatest needs was simply connecting people and, and finding a way of bringing them all together um, and so that's what I hope I've been able to, to help do. Oh, that's great. That's great. So let's move our focus on now to like what has consumed all of our attention globally. So every day we read in the press, the local press, national press, international press, about the real impacts the coronavirus and pandemic is having on people and is devastating. And I guess, you know, sometimes there's a real risk you run. You know, when you're getting, when you're used to 712 people died, 928 people died, 919 people died, sometimes you may start to get some, um, those numbers may not mean anything as much, even though other, every number, you know, 918 is 918 families, friends, colleagues, neighbors, all affected. So we must never lose sight of that huge, you know, big picture and the real impact this has had. But bringing in more and distilling in more to our local community in St. Albans and maybe a little bit wider looking at Hertfordshire, what would you say as the, as the impact has been on our community? Because, you know, when we look at, you know, we look at Rishi Sunak or Matt Hancock or the Prime Minister stand on the podium every day and it's real, you know, real are these numbers. On a national scale is huge, but what impact are you seeing this affects our local community within St. Albans and maybe Hertfordshire because some of the newsletters that you send out and the work you do covers Hertfordshire sometimes. Yeah. So it would be, be quite good to take, get your take on that. Sure. So I think the first thing uh, to say is that people are being affected in very different ways. Uh, for some people, uh, the coronavirus um, and the lockdown will just be a blip in their life because maybe they're, they're working for a big company that yeah. is financially resilient and um, they've been furloughed for a few months, but they, they probably know that their job is quite secure. So yeah. for now they're just at home and um, probably struggling a little bit with a bit of maybe homeschooling or something. Yeah. Um, but for them, it's just a blip. Um, but for, um, for a lot of people, it's quite a peculiar experience. For a lot of people, it's horribly isolating. And for others, it's a massive storm. Um, and I think that's the thing that I've picked up most is that for some it's a blip and for some it's a storm and people's experience is very different. And it will depend on things like how financially secure um, uh, you are as an individual and with your job. It will yeah. depend on, uh, on your health and what your health was like before coronavirus hit and whether you have vulnerable people in your family. Um, it, there'll be factors like um, how many people you live with and um, you know, whether you have vulnerable people in your house, shielding people in your house that you need to protect. You know, whether you're a frontline worker or whether you're a banker, your life will be very, very different. Because uh, as a frontline worker, you'll be working every single hour going, um, where yeah. a lot of people may not be working or commuting, for example. Mm. Um, and, um, and increasingly, you know, as, as the virus has spread and as more people die of it or die with it, um, I think increasingly we're all starting to hear of people that we know of, um, maybe friends and family, and it's becoming a little bit more real because it, you know, it, when it hits somebody that you know or someone that you know of, uh, obviously it feels a bit close to home. So I think that um, it's very hard to know how Obviously, we can observe that, you know, um, businesses have been horribly affected, particularly small businesses that have had to close. We know that in Hertfordshire, we have a very, very high level of employment normally. But a lot of people, because we got, we're very close to, um, you know, uh, Elstree Studios, we have a lot of freelancers and creatives and we have a lot of people who work in London. Um, and because there's quite a lot of jobs around in our area, a lot of people have been able to sort of work as freelancers and now they are suddenly find themselves very financially insecure. And so that's one of the really big issues to hit home uh, here in St Albans. But I think, to be honest, none of us, even though we can observe things like um, how businesses have been 
affected and how many self, how many unemployed there are and how many more applications there have been to universal credits i think it's going to be some time until we can really appreciate how it's affected all of us because we're all going to be we will we will have had some you know in a few weeks time we will have been experiencing you know uh, grief and isolation and maybe fluctuations in physical and mental health and so it's going to take some time to really assess the big impact on all of us i think as a community you're right and um you said something that i really resonated when you said you know in in, in st Albans normally there's a high risk of employment businesses you know usually thrive yeah. uh, within st Albans and even hertfordshire and i remember before we went into full lockdown or even the first week of lockdown there was a huge rallying around around the small businesses yes. um in, in st Albans. i mean you know the fruit and the local fruit and veg companies the meat companies yeah. uh, the restaurants and people really wanted to help and help in you know by ordering takeaways but when the full lockdown came in all of the restaurants obviously being non-essential had to close down but they still i still notice and i observe that the small businesses like the, the grocers the corner shops the butchers people still sort of patronize them so we know that in terms of crisis there's a huge sense of community sometimes i mean that is one of the one of the good things that come if anything good can come out of a crisis such as this you see a huge sense of community mm -hmm. uh, are, are you seeing that in st Albans? Are, are you seeing people pull together are you seeing people coming together to try and get through this the best way they can are you seeing a real sense of great resilience and community spirit being at play uh within our local community yeah so i mean i think one of the things one of the things that I'm very lucky with uh, in my job is that I get to see the best of the community anyway. <laughs> so I get to see lots of people, I get to meet lots of people um, and the charities that they work with or, um, or the businesses they've started. Um, and I get to see a lot of that stuff happening anyway. Um, but I think what has um, surprised me so pleasantly is the kind of the initiatives that are coming up that everybody can take part in. So there's obviously the volunteering scheme with Communities First um, and lots of people who have never volunteered before have suddenly, have suddenly now got involved. Um, lots of sort of groups of people supporting each other on their street, either with shopping or collection, collecting prescriptions. And I know that in Bricky Wood in particular, there's a um, sort of a prescription specific um, group where people <laughs> helping each other. Um, and the thing that I just, I find so joyful um, are the paintings of the rainbows that children have been putting in yes. their schools and the rainbow trail group. So even when I can't see them out and about on my daily walk, um, I can see them in the Facebook group and I can say, oh, that's a nice one, or that's a nice one, you know. Yeah. Um, but they're genuinely joyful and I think people who, um, if you just go for your daily exercise and uh, I mean, my local postman commented on it as well and said how lovely it is <laughs> to see all the paintings, I think that's really wonderful. And um, when we are getting lots of bad news and it's all quite scary and there are big questions to ask about, you know, were things done soon enough and, you know, what's the response been like? It's also really important to focus on those lovely positive symbols of hope, I think. And, it, and it's interesting you say about the rainbow because um, we I live in a development in, in Frogmore in, in St Albans and one of our neighbours ordered, um, you know, the chalk, the coloured chalks, oh, yeah. delivered it to every household with children. And so what the children have been doing is they've been painting the brickwork outside of the houses in different colours of the rainbow. Sure. And on our daily walks, that just really cheers us up because you know like you said it's very bleak time and you know you there's so much going on in terms of whether people are protected whether you know people are dying and avoidable and all of that kind of stuff but there's this there's a small sort of rainbow you know literally literally that you get to see as you get out and about in the community and you see people trying displaying the best of i would say the brit spirit you know there's a lot of grit, a lot of resilience and that's really heartwarming to watch yeah. the other thing i wanted to talk about with you to explore is we also know that at, in times of crisis, hope can be a powerful force. Mm -hmm. um, you know, hope that one day we'll get over this. You know, this is not the first time in history that humankind has been subject to this sort of existential threat. And every time we've sort of managed to come over it. So to, to the people, you know, living in our community within St. Albans right now, who may feel down who may feel anxious anxiety is a real thing at this time for the reasons that we've discussed on this call whether that's because um people are losing their jobs or people are financially insecure or people are you know isolating with a vulnerable member of their family um there are lots of threats that people are, are, are undergoing and they're facing so what would you say to people that are feeling a bit down now and uh, from any message of hope is there anything you would say to them to get to just encourage them just a little bit more to hold on and to keep going 
Sure. Um, I mean, the first thing I would say is be kind to yourself. I think a lot of people uh, put themselves under pressure and there's a very human thing that we all do when we're under pressure, which is to try and compare how we feel on the inside with how other people are on the outside. Um, and when we're isolated at home and all we see is other people's lives on Facebook and Instagram and things, it's very easy to sit there feeling really glum at everybody else's learning a new language or running a marathon on their balcony and everyone else is sort of, you know, it's not real, you know, people are only posting a small part of their life. And so it's, my first message would be be kind to yourself because all of us are having, you know, all of us are having little wobbles and trying to readjust to this new way of living. And we've all got our anxieties about you know, family members or people in the community. Um, so be kind to yourself, uh, be kind to others. As I say, I think some people are taking, you know, some people are finding that this, is, this will be a blip, others are finding it to be a storm. And therefore some people will be trying to, um, laugh their way through it other people will be crying their way through it some people will be doing a little bit of both and so I think we just all need to give each other a little bit of a break uh, whether that's in the family or whether it's you know in the household or wherever it might be so be kind to yourselves be kind to others um, and I would say you know, try and create some thinking time to, about what we want our community and our country to be after this the fact is we keep talking about uh, or some people keep using the phrase when things go back to normal um, and if I'm honest I don't think any of us really know whether we will go back to normal or what the new normal is going to be um, the one thing that I think is going to be fascinating is we're all um, starting to value things that we maybe hadn't valued for some time whether it's spending time with loved ones uh, whether it's doing sort of art, arts and crafts you know rather than working so hard um, whether it whether it's you know our, you know whether it's shelf stackers and delivery men and uh, men and women and our frontline workers where they are clapping for carers every Thursday night and there's a huge number of people that we are now sort of realizing why they're key workers and what that means and the kind of sacrifices that some people are prepared um, to make and so we're reevaluating a lot of that stuff but I think equally um, there's going to be a huge amount of information and data that comes out of um, this process. We will know, for example, what the impact is on air pollution. We will know the quality of our air and what it's going to take to improve the quality of our air, you know, with fewer cars on the road and fewer planes in the sky. You know, we're, we're going to know how many people are financially insecure and what, what that's going to mean in terms of what we need to do as a country to make sure there's a safety net for people in future. You know, we're going to know how many people are um, physically vulnerable and what are we going to have to do in, you know, in future to make sure that they are protected in these kinds of circumstances. You know, we will, we will know, we'll have some numbers and statistics as well as anecdotal evidence around how people um, react, behavioural science and how people behave in these circumstances. Um, and we'll be able to tailor sort of, you know, the, the workplace and our lifestyles accordingly. Um, and so there's going to be, a, I think there's going to be some good things that come out of this um, and we can all make sure that we focus on those and, and don't lose them. It's interesting you say that because um, that's, that's, that's the thinking that a lot of that thinking is out there in terms of we don't know what the new normal will be like. We're only hoping that the lessons that we've learned from this, this time in history would serve to better humanity going forward. Mm -hmm. And um, there are two schools of thought around, you know, I just wanted to pick up a thread around what you said around being kind to yourself. There are currently two schools of thought. Um, one, one school of thought says, you know, this is a great time. You will never get this time again. So, you know, so go out there, do this online course, do this and do that. You know, all the things you've never had time to do, just take this, this downtime um, to invest in yourself and do more. There's another school of thought that says, you know, we're in a crisis. So if you don't want to do more, that's fine. If you just want to go to bed, you know, put a duvet over your head and wish the day away, that's also fine. So I, I'm sure the answer is somewhere in the middle, but what's, what's, your, what's your perspective on those two schools of thoughts, which, you know, there's a huge battle that is raging on social media around do more or just, you know, go to bed. <laughs> sure. um, I think it depends entirely on how you've been affected by coronavirus and it depends entirely on, um, on what your experience of it is. So as I said, if you are financially secure and you have a garden and you can sit outside or you've got some green space near your house and you are living with people who you love and you get on with, then actually maybe you have the um, 
the time and the emotional capacity to do some self-improvement. Um, but equally, um, when there is this kind of scary thing out there and it feels like it's sort of out there somewhere, um, uh, when there's a scary thing out there, we know that we all behave in different kind of ways. And some people, it's completely legitimate to want to just climb under the duvet. Now, it might be that you want to climb under the duvet because you're just sick of hearing about it on the news. It yeah. might be that you're incredibly scared for the future. It might be that you're your your life's dream of a business that you wanted to set up it's taken you 10 years of blood sweat and tears and sacrifices and all of a sudden it's vanished from beneath you i think for people who are in those circumstances it's completely legitimate to want to just climb under the duvet so um i think unless you know somebody else's personal circumstances unless you know um what they're dealing with unless you know um, whether they feel safe and secure in their home or whether they are scared for loved ones and um, we just can't judge um, what people should and shouldn't be doing um, and I think each of us just have to handle it in our own ways and make sure that whatever route we take whether it's self-improvement or um, eating your body weight and Pringles which is one of my bad habits or somewhere um, in between <laughs> or somewhere in between I mean I can tell you I mean I'm working really hard at home you know I'm working really long days to try and respond to as many emails as possible um, but apart from that I'm, I'm going for a walk every day I'm not pushing myself to go for a run or lose weight or yeah. um you know learn a new language i'm just doing my job and i'm going for a walk and i'm treating myself to a few crisps now and then um, and taking it one day at a time <laughs> I mean, one, one day at a time so i mean i think to be honest i think if people are having that kind of battle about you know which one should i be doing i think there's a probably has to be a recognition that you have the luxury of being able to choose and for a lot of people they don't have that luxury because a lot of things have just been pulled out from underneath them whether it's you know job income and all the worries that comes with that in terms of you know security and 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 um and uh, safety and security so i i think it just depends on people's circumstances that's 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 very true i'm picking up on the thread of what you've said around some people that just do not have that luxury to decide whether they want to self-improve. You know, a lot of people are in survival mode. They just are trying to get through the day, get food on the table, and just get through the emotion upheaval of everything that has happened. And we as a church, a church within the community, want to do our part to help. So yeah. there are various things that we've done over the past few weeks. So some of our members have given um, gifts of cash um, to people that need, you know, done grocery shopping. And as a, as a church body, We've also made a cash donation to the um, St. Thomas Buddha District um, Food Bank, which is which is great. Um, but is there anything you know from your uh, from your um, sort of pivotal view of St. Albans going about you know dealing with the the um, sort of the electorate on a day to day basis? What would you say are some of the practical ways in which anybody listening out there or people that within our church community can help others that have pressing needs? What are the practical ways in which we can lend a hand? Sure. So, um, I mean, it's amazing. It's really wonderful to hear that your church has made a donation to the food bank. Um, the demand on the food bank has gone through the roof. Um, I think it tripled uh, last week. Um, they now have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of families um, relying on them. So cash donations or food donations or volunteering your time to actually help in the food bank if you're able to do so, if you don't have symptoms and if you're not vulnerable, um, then that's wonderful. Um, there are other really good causes around as well. So for example, we know that when there's a pandemic, there is always an increase in domestic violence. Yeah. So St Albans and Harpenden um, Refuge, Women's Refuge, um, obviously would, be, would welcome uh, cash donations as well. Um, there, for those who want to show their appreciation for um, the NHS, um, our local West Hertfordshire Hospitals Trust has a charity called Raise, um, and they're raising money to buy sort of um, sort of toiletries um, and food for the staff who are on um, who are working in the NHS hospitals, but also for for patients as well. Um, and um, I guess the other thing is, in terms of rather than just charity. Two other really important things. One is that if you have the ability to spend money, because some people still do, please support our local businesses because many of them, particularly the food and drink ones, have now moved to doing deliveries and orders online. Um, there's lots of sort of everything from jewelry shops to dog grooming that are selling gift vouchers, which can be bought now, um, but can be given and spent later, which is helpful for cash flow. Um, so the Enjoy St Albans website um, has a list of offers and that's really, that's really wonderful. Um, and then if you have the time and you're willing to volunteer, uh, contact communities first because we do have a lot of vulnerable people who are either shielding 
or they're self-isolating because they maybe got symptoms um, and they might just need a newspaper, a loaf of bread and some orange juice. They might need a few carrots picking up um, mm. and there's quite a few sort of elderly people who maybe live on their own who won't be able to speak to anybody at all and so being able to pick up the phone and talk to somebody uh, is also a really good thing and Communities First are quite good at trying to match you so that you know if you've got a cat and you like talking about cats they might match to somebody else who can talk, tell you all about their cat as well you know if you really like reading or um uh you know or you go to church or whatever it is then they might match you with somebody who's got similar interests so um, volunteering for communities first support yeah. our local businesses and give to charity if you can oh that's great we i'm sure our members and people watching would would find that really useful thank you mm. one more question so just We've had a very interesting conversation, but is there any other thing out there that you'd like to pass across to the community? And also, how can people contact you? How can people get in, stay up to date and stay abreast with of all of the good works that you are doing on behalf of St. Albans? So um, what are the messages that you have and how can we contact you and be more in touch with you and get, an, get the regular updates? Sure. So if you want to receive updates, you can sign up to get my regular community newsletter. Um, I've been putting out quite a few um, um, updates as well um, uh, on top of my monthly newsletters. And you can do that by going to my website, which is daisycooper.org.uk. Um, and if you have a specific uh, personal issue, whether that's um, you know, you need some business support or you've got a housing problem or um, there's somebody that you know that you know, needs to get some food and um, uh, or there's suddenly an um, uh, immigration or housing or universal credit, any of those kind of issues that come along, then that was uh, that, then you can email me personally on my parliamentary email address. Okay. And that's daisy.cooper.mp at parliament.uk. And all we require is your name, address and postcode and a summary of issues. Um, and, uh, and then we can help you. Oh, that's great. And any last message, any other, you know, anything you want to pass on to the community before we round up? You know, um, I guess I'd say be kind to yourself, be kind to others, stay safe, stay at home, wash your hands, um, <laughs> wash your hands. Um, but most of all, just be kind to each other. It's a tough time. Yeah, and don't hold your rules. <laughs> <laughs> no all all yeah, yeah. All, all eggs or any of these things. Oh, great. Thank you so much, Daisy. It's been so Pleasure. much fun having you. Thank you for all the work that you do. Um, I'm sure the viewership and everybody watching would join me in saying a huge thank you to you for being on the forefront of this matters for the community. As I said, we're so lucky to have you. Thank you well, so much. My pleasure. Take care. All right, take care. Have a lovely evening. God bless. Yeah, bye. bye. I hear you say. Look up, child.